Harris, Nancy Harris. Nancy Harris Kirchhoff. That's right. And your your claim to fame is is your father ran Harris Market. He owned Harris Market. Yeah. So Harris Market on Kirkwood Road, and then followed by Harris Market Supermarket on Woodlawn and wow. in Manchester. Yes, and uh, I come into the picture around 1965, so I, I would only know the Manchester one. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, tell me about the Harris's, your dad. I see some pictures you have. It looks like, is that, poss is that your dad right there? Yeah, my dad. Well, my dad was... Um, born in 1915, but really the family started in um, 1988, something like that, when um, Henry Harris, my great-grandfather, settled after the Civil War with his young wife, Catherine Voss, on a large farm. This would be so, 1880s? Yeah. Okay. What did I say, 1980? Yeah, it's okay. Well, <laughs> I'll keep you honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's a picture of him, but I don't have a picture of her. Okay. No, here. Right oh, here. okay. So this is this is grand this is your grandpa? Right. Great grandpa. Great grandpa. This is my grandfather. Okay. Fred D. Harris. And, and this is um Henry mm -hmm. Harris. All right. Who came from Germany. Yeah, and, yeah. Um they they bought the parcel of land. It was a big farm that they had, and it was actually in Huntley Village, and it was a um, Charles Brown property. Maybe some people know who it is. No, Huntley, like over towards right, Huntley well, Village, Huntley Hill, yeah, or Huntley Hills housing area behind Bettendorf's. No, no, well, this is there. this was um, north of that. Oh, okay, North County. Yeah. Okay. It's it's. Um, a stables now and there's it's still owned by okay. Big, people yeah that love the land it was a beautiful place to farm and so what they did they just sold their produce and that's how the whole business started okay yeah so great grandpa and grandpa were were in the produce business and farm. well yeah my grandfather stayed um they had Great grandfather had six children, and what they did, I was like, "Why would you ever sell that parcel of land? Mm -hmm. It's so valuable." And it's like, because you, in years ago, they would just divide up land or what they had and and set everybody up in a home. Oh, okay. So it was a way of giving something to your kids. Yeah. So they did that, and um, my grandfather went to Taylor and. Um, he decided to start a grocery store, and he was the Taylor owner. Taylor Avenue? Avenue. Okay, so he had moved down this way. Uh huh. Okay, so going back, great grandpa comes from Germany. Uh huh. And that's about when eighteen after the war. I think it's more like eighteen sixty something. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, there was a lot of German immigration then. Mm hmm. All right, interesting. All right, and his name was first name was. Henry. Henry. Harris. Okay, so Henry Harris. Yeah. And then your grandpa's name was Fred. Fred D. Fred David. D. David. Okay. Yeah. And and he moved down on Taylor. He lived on Taylor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would know it as a Hardy Manise home because they bought it after the Manises bought it after my grandfather mm -hmm. was raised there. So um, then. When did when did you think Grandpa was born? About if your dad was born in 1915, your grandpa was probably born in the 1800s. I would guess. My dad was 1915. I got um, my grandfather. I'm not quite sure. My grandpa was born in like 1898 or something like that. 19 1898. 1898. And my grand yeah that would be yeah that was uh, yeah. I think so because he. My dad was. They recalled the um, World's Fair when the, okay. all the kids were growing up. So that's pretty amazing. It would, yeah, he would have been born in the early 1900s. Or, or the World's Fair is the 1900s. I mean, not, no, 1890s, mm -hmm. early 1890s, someplace in there. All right, and then, uh, then your dad is he born in Kirkwood? Uh huh. Oh, he lived in Kirkwood his whole life. Yeah, he did too. Wow. And then I followed, and I live here. Yeah. My brother and sister moved to California. And what, um, what are their names? If you want to. Barbie. Barbie. Harris. Okay. And Rick 
Harris, who's really Fred C. Jr. So oh, my, okay. um, yeah, Fred C. Jr. Because my dad, here's my dad, mm -hmm. and this is when my he... dad right there. <laughs> These are great. These. Yeah. So he. Um, That's a nice. I don't think anybody really expected him to get married, but he met my mom, and there you go. Well, yeah. The rest is yeah. history. And where they do it now? He's living in Kirkwood, so he probably goes to St. Peter's. Yeah, he went to St. Peter's in um, Coyle. Okay, he Eugene likes Coyle. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, not Coyle. Um, what was it called? I don't know if they had Coyle. They had they had uh, St. Peter's. They had uh, Eugene Coyle High School. Uh -huh. And then when but Bianchi think... started, they closed Eugene Coyle. And everybody went to Bianchi. Yeah. So... He always said he went to CBC, so it, well, then it could why, have been why, that. Yeah, why not doubt it? No, don't doubt we it. We don't have all the greatest records, okay. but we do have some things in here. So, um, so, so now I see some. All right, so Fred grows up. Does he go? To, he went to East Haven. Went to CBC. He graduates high school, I imagine. Uh huh. And then he, his father was um, Fred D. had the grocery store. And I let me just find that little okay. clip on it. Now, what book are you looking at there? I'm looking at the history of Kirkwood. And ah. this is um, from 1851 to 1965. Oh, wow. Yeah. And... I'm trying to find the grocery it's, store it's because it's everyone just bought and sold and moved and you know mm -hmm. there's a sure. lot of now, now does your dad go I saw some pictures in the military does he go to the military before he goes does he go to World he War II? went to World War II yes and he and my mom were married right before he left and then um, was then he came what, home what, and then they, what branch did he serve um, he was a chef so I in the army. Oh wow! Okay. But he, sergeant, because he was, you know, he had the grocery store, so he knew a lot about food, oh, and yeah. he loved to cook. And I ah, pick up his, okay. uh, his talent. That's what cooking. my grandfather did more too as well as a cook. But he, did? he probably wasn't the chef. <laughs> yeah, he wanted. He was in World War One, and they wanted, and he wanted to go to World War Two as well. And he was so old, they said, "Well, you'll be, you can be a cook." And he said, oh, "Okay." Yeah, he. he you know, it was tough, but it was um, it was good, mm -hmm. and he came home safe and sound, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, that was great. So Harris Grocery Store was established as a partnership in 1906 with William Niebuhr okay. and Fred D. Harris, who's my grandfather. Okay. And then subsequently, I don't know how this came to fruition, but my grandfather bought out Nienberg, Nieberg, okay. and the name was changed from Nieberg and Harris to Harris Grocery Store. Okay. It was originally located in the Kirkwood Hotel. Oh. I don't know where that, that is. Kirkwood, you know where Spencer's is, uh, Grill is? Yeah. That, right across the street from there was the Kirkwood uh, okay. Hotel. I knew that years ago, but I couldn't. Basically. Yeah. So, it, so the grocery store was in the hotel? Or the the location. It, yeah. was lo it was a located building. in the hotel building. Yeah, it was like a block. It was almost a yeah. block. Yeah. At 102 South Kirkwood Road. But then okay. the store was subsequently moved to 203 South Kirkwood Road. Okay. From there, it was moved to the building at the corner of Adams and Kirkwood Road, where the Kirkwood Bank, which mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. no longer there. It's now right. Adams Place. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's where it was. And mm -hmm. it occupied two other locations. 209 and 223 North Kirkwood Road before oh, okay. moving to its present location, which is where Woodlawn he, of Manchester. Yeah, it was on Manchester. It was 10260 Manchester Road, and it was um, in here in night. You know, this was 1965. It was mm -hmm. still operational. Oh yeah, that's about when we were showing up. Yeah, causing problems. So. Um, and so now, it was always a grocery store. Uh, I think they called it a supermarket. But yeah, my dad called it a supermarket. 
I think it's up yeah, there. Yeah, it's right there. Harris Supermarket. Harris Supermarket. And uh, and next to Carson Pontiac. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so so tell me about the when did you start being part of the business or working that? I store? always loved the store and. Um, from when you were a wee young person or what? what? Yeah, but my mom would just bring us, bring myself, my sister's a couple of years younger, and my brother didn't come. He's six years younger than me, mm -hmm. so. What, where did, did you guys live in Kirkwood? Where did we, we lived at 13 Taylor Woods. Okay. Yeah. All right, not too far away. Yeah. Did you guys, what schools did you guys go to? St. Peter's, and then I went on to Viz, and so did my sister. Oh, okay. In sixth and seventh grade, and eighth grade, and then high school. My brother was at St. Peter's and went to um, CBC. Okay. Yeah. So that's neat. I, I probably know some of the nuns you know. The, the Sister Mary Mellon, the little girl. Oh, I've, anyway. I, I can't come up with those names. I, she was she was like four feet tall. So when I was like in seventh oh. grade, I was taller than her. So yeah. <laughs> that I guess why I remember. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's cute. That is. And so you're always kind of just growing up around the business. I was growing up I, and I loved it. And then when my father moved so I was nine when he moved into the location in Kirkwood mm -hmm. so that would have been you mean on Manchester now? um 1956 so, uh, that's when you guys were on the woodlot in Manchester uh, mm -hmm. what was it you said that you think that was a hardware store or something before? so there was a hardware store and it was called um uh, can't remember. Oh, well, I'll come if up it with comes, it. Yeah, if it, if it flies back, we'll get it. But and it's interesting. It's, I, I thought it was always a grocery store, but it's. I think it was part, partially a grocery mm -hmm. store, part of it, and then the other part was a uh, hardware. It seems to me that it seemed like it was three separate. Not it was one building, but three separate uh -huh. uh, addresses. Like yeah. Okay, and so your dad bought rented them all. And yeah. turned it into a big supermarket. Right. Whereas it was, it seemed like three little separate things. And it had a basement. Yeah. What was in the basement? I didn't like going down there. Oh, okay. I'd get too spooked. I, you know, you know, the reason I know I had a basement is they did some work to that building 10 years ago. And to get occupancy, they said there's no way you can have any kind of business or any activity down here. So they made them pour gravel in the basement and fill it up. Oh, really? Wow. So that they couldn't use it. Because there's no fire street. That's what the that was the way the city. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, so I remember seeing a like, dump truck of gravel. I'm like, what yeah. Are you doing? And they're filling up the basement. I'm like, well, I wonder what was there. So it was Hirschbeck. Hirschbeck is that? And that's who. The and owner? that's who they they sold groceries. And I I would think what they called notions because okay. it shows up in pictures that I have from the supermarket. And notions must have been a big term then. I just don't remember it. What is a notion? I think I know what a notion is. Well, there's a picture in here someplace. Okay. Our notion, I always think of notions here. as some sort of sewing stuff and whatnot. Sewing notions. Okay, that's right. Yeah. All right. Is this you and your dad? Yeah. This Me is priceless. <laughs> that's cute. Those were my good old days. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I started working there when I was 13, and I loved it so much because I, I was able to do both the checkout and I um, filled orders for my dad on so when people, he had delivery business. Mm -hmm. I, filling yeah, orders. so that was really cool. And so he proposed to me at some point that I take over the vacations and he didn't have to hire somebody outside of the business mm -hmm. to do the two women that work there, the checkers and their names were bernice right? and i can't think of the other marge what is marge it? no marge is my mom marge is, okay marge is your mom yeah okay. she didn't you do the checkout okay but i know i remember her name marge yeah so i'm right okay so marge was marge harris yeah okay but did she ever help i guess she, she yeah she was the one that you saw you thought maybe i was a bookkeeper well that was my <laughs> yeah. mom that was your mom. Okay. Yeah. And and she would be like, people would buy stuff and she'd pull out their record and she'd annotate something on it and put it back in the little file. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she did all the bookkeeping. My okay. dad did all the ordering, but she helped out with bookkeeping and the charges. I mean, I think what the two things they really did well, really well, grocery, the delivery, and they also ran credit for everybody. I and that was really wonderful. So people would just pay it's, once a month and you would get, did you guys yeah, mail but out it, a, a but statement? My, parents had to do it mm -hmm. on a Sunday and they didn't my mother didn't like having to have her Sunday taken away but yeah, it's it a was lot of good. work uh, yeah yeah but you own your own business and you do what you have to do so interesting so yeah everybody else had a day off and you guys are running the books yeah on Sunday yeah yeah all right, so uh, what, what what did you first start doing? Just like, you were filling orders? I was 13 years old. Okay. When he proposed coming in the mm -hmm. week during the summer. So I did that when they each had maybe two. They were, it was all union by then. Okay. So yeah, he right. had to pay union wages. And what he proposed to me is I'll pay you exactly what I would have to pay wow. someone else. It was a lot of money. So you were like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, my sister didn't do it too much, but um, my brother did too. Okay, so, all right. When he came along. And then our charge, so we did had running books of mm -hmm. all these people, and for the most part, everyone was so good about mm -hmm. paying on time, and I know they were happy about that. Okay, and then, like this one here, what, what, do you, what do we think, what year do you think that is then? Well, it looks like you're doing some some calling and different things. Yeah, I don't know why he was calling, but it, this is the only copy I have of all this. I see names that are familiar. Mm -hmm. I see I a lot people, of names. Yeah. I, it's really nice to have and, these. Yeah, let's. I'm just gonna go with last names. Like here. Mrs. Kinsella. The Bartrams. Uh huh. The uh, there's Bertrams. Mm hmm. Bignalls. Mm hmm. Wow. Cusumanos. This is pretty neat. It's a, the Fagans. a lot in Kirkwood, mm -hmm. Warson Woods, Ledoux. Right, Brookhaven. So really, my father considered his biggest competitor. I cut her grass. Juanita Harder on Woodlawn Court. You what? I cut her grass when I was a kid. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Juanita Harder. Huh. Yeah. This is like a walk back down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did when I was the in Carlskin. Now the daughter oh. lives down the yes. street. I'm Carlskins. Yes. Yeah. This is neat. Ledbetters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The McDougals. Yeah, I loved. I loved all their customers. Mm -hmm. Wow. So my father's personality was really, he was so, he wasn't a gregarious person, but he was always smiling and he was just so friendly to customers. They loved mm -hmm. coming in. So it was, that was really good to see. And it was a big influence on me. Do I remember him working, uh, you had butchers back there? You had a little, yeah, I what, did. Was I, he? Went back to the butcher shop and learned how to do all that too. So was your dad back there once in a while? I would yeah. see him back there working. He would be back there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you would bring in? Would you bring in sides of beef and do it and take them down? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't personally. No, do but it. they the guys would do it. You had a butcher in the shop. Yeah, I was I was yeah. um, slicing meat or whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and as I recall, the first aisle was produce. The best produce in the city, because that was okay. So this is so important to okay. tell you about my my <laughs> my dad. He became very close to one of the guys um, that was on Produce Row down in Sulark. Yeah, and they would and and they sold produce other places besides mm -hmm. Sulark. But anyhow, he he would. Um, He, he and this guy, and I can't think of his first name, but they talked all the time because my dad was always buying on the phone in the back and taking either taking orders from customers or, you know, that's how the day started, or buying produce. Okay. And that was, and was the office behind the 
the bake the the bread the bread section the office was up a little stairway okay. by the produce yeah okay uh, that's right i remember seeing above. people up there uh -huh. by the soda machine yeah my dad would be up there my mom would be up there okay not full time no but no but but that yeah. do you remember yeah and there was yeah. a little ford gum machine yeah <laughs> yeah you remember that too huh yeah yeah yeah, I loved it. Yeah, um, two, two, two so the chocolates for a produce. Pound. His, he was influenced by the, the man that he bought produce from, um, and the guy said, you know, you really need to wash your produce before wash your produce before um, you sell it. So he had somebody that just worked with him on produce, and they would they had this huge sink in the back and. There was also a refrigerator there. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of spoilage because you, once it gets wet, you know what happens to produce. It's yeah, not going to stay around. Them, yes. But he wanted to get all those pesticides off of them. Okay, so the guy at like really he kept them really kept from people getting yeah. sick and stuff. I mean, that was great. Yeah, nobody was thinking like that. Nobody was doing that. So that's like in the 50s and yeah. 40s or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, like the they're eating DDT 50s, or whatever. Fifties right? yeah. and sixties, yeah, huh. and seventies. Wow. He did it all that time. Yeah. Okay, so you went down the first row was produce, and then you got into like uh, it, dry it went goods. down the first row. It was all canned goods, right? And then, and if I'm not mistaken, the aisles. Kind of took a little jog. They didn't just go straight all the way through. So no, they, they of, didn't go all the way. That's probably because of this being three different stores. Probably. Right. Okay. Yeah. I love your memory of this. I mean, what, you loved it as a child. When we were kids, we would get a dime and we'd go buy a pop. <laughs> and we didn't have two cents for the bottle. So we just walk around your store <laughs> and look at everything. And there was like bing and, you know, oh, look at that. Oh. Uh, you know, and yeah, that's that's what we would do, and 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 get in trouble. <laughs> we were the well, neighbor boy that would get in trouble. They put Mountain Dew and kids in, and you know, things happen. You know, your brother Greg told you know? me that when he was, he was his your mom would pin a list of groceries she needed on mm -hmm, his shirt, mm -hmm. and then he would come up to the store, mm -hmm. and I. I don't know how it was paid for, but somebody always helped him, yeah. and it was always done. It was so yeah. great. That's just how fun that was oh, last yeah. year. Well, I remember one time my mom gave me a list, and she gave me like a dollar to go to the store. And while I was at the register, I think I added a candy bar you know, <laughs> for my services. And I didn't tell my mom, but I, I didn't think, uh, I was before I was in school, I didn't understand math. Yeah, <laughs> I thought if I just gave her some money back, she'd be happy. Yeah, and and she goes, "Is this everything?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> and when I went over to the neighbors, and we were me and my little friend were in the behind in the big bushes that you could crawl into. I remember my mom coming in there, give me that candy bar, and grabbing, <laughs> I don't know how she figured it out. You know? That is great. Oh yeah, yeah, I love so, it. yeah. So yeah. and we used to go rifling through your. Uh, you had a, a bunch of wooden boxes, the fruit boxes. Uh huh. We would take all that wood home and build stuff with it. Oh. Go karts, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Yeah. Well, what's going? We we were just walking down the aisles. Yeah. So the so you had canned goods, you had the the uh, and then produce, the, and then the and little then office the up there. Butcher. And then the well, the yeah. butcher in the back was at the yeah. It okay. was along the back mm -hmm. to where. The store broke up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then it was definitely a well-defined uh, meat section. There. Yeah, and it really butted up to the produce. So on the yeah, produce kind of went on the outside. Yeah. Well. And then, then you just had like canned goods, dry goods, baking, all kinds of things. Uh huh. And uh, and then and then you got over to the fun stuff like, you know, the chips and oh yes, yes, <laughs> the junk food. Yes. Yeah, and the bread <laughs> and the and the yeah and bread and stuff. yeah. Yeah. And um, then there was a liquor department and yes. um, beer. We mm -hmm. had beer and liquor. and. I yeah. think my brother broke a bottle of something one time. <laughs> my little brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the big, there was yeah. a big brouhaha over that. I doubt yeah. if my dad got upset. He was just no, so no. kind. Yeah. I remember now, 
one time. Now, my one brother, Scott, who is between Greg and me, uh -huh. a little older, he had the paper stand across the street uh, at Woodlawn in Manchester. He oh. sold the post in the evenings. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and I remember one time there was a little tussle between your dad and the paper guy. Oh, really? Yeah, because your dad was selling papers, and the guy from the paper, the one that he, he would drive the papers off for my brother, uh -huh. he come over and bought all the papers. So people had to go across the street and buy papers. Oh, no. And your dad and him, your dad was saying, you can buy one paper, not all. And there was a big, <laughs> I, remember, I remember voices were raised. Oh, my gosh. I, it was, made, yeah, so that was like a standoff moment. <laughs> yeah, when you're like seven or eight, anything's a big deal, right? Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. But so we, we had a lot of um, family working in the store. My dad and bought the business from my grandfather, mm -hmm. and he owned it solely himself. My my uh, cousins are whose father's Francis Harris. I don't know if you know that name. He was on city council. He's Really? So, yeah, yeah, he's a really interesting guy. He's no longer with us, but um, he had brought hardware on Kirkwood Road. Francis Harris? Yeah. I remember, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Two doors down from my dad. Really. Right, right by the bakery and uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woolworths. And, yeah. Yeah. The so model. he didn't work for my dad. He really wanted the store with my dad, but I don't know in the what was going on that the, my grandfather wanted to sell. I, my dad was the oldest boy. They lost an, um, they lost one of their children. So this is my grandfather and grandmother right here at their wedding. Wow. And then this is my dad with his older brother, but we kind of think he died in the pandemic. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they're wearing little army uniforms. So yeah. this is like probably around then. Yeah. Ernest and Fred. Ernst, yeah. Ernst. Yeah. yeah a nice so dream, nice it was nice because my um, my dad died at such a young age. I he had um, kidney failure. He, uh, the only bad thing about the war was that he had kidney stones and got kind of butchered up. So anyhow, oh, they, oh, that's okay. why his kidney. Failed. His kidneys failed. He was only sixty-four when he died. Wow. That's but my good my um, uncle Franny lived to be close to ninety, if not ninety. And so, and he has like this. He had this memory. He could remember everything. Just quote. And he he's the one that owned Rod Hardware. Rod Har Hardware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's probably a lot of information he gave to Kirkwood, but. Um, and then, so these are the children, and that was Uncle Franny, and there's my dad, and Louise and Margaret, and then there's a baby that wasn't born yet, but it would be Louie. Mm -hmm. And so Louie worked for my father. Louise worked for my father. So, wow. yeah, I don't know. It's a little... Good stories there, but I'm not going into it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, your dad likes cigars? My dad loves cigars. What so, was this brand? would probably be Hoff Hoffman? H A U P T A N or T M A N? Oh, yeah. So, he that's loved how I remember barbecue. your dad right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Barbecue and smoke mm -hmm. cigars. Yeah. He, this is later years because he, he was um, into cigarettes when he was young on the. Um, war and all that. And that's what they put in the uh, in the sea rations. They would put cigarettes. In. Yeah, these are all great. So pretty much the same. But he smoked. He loved cigars. He liked a Weber kettle too. Yeah, yeah. And I gave it's a cute story. My sister, um, her son. I just brought. He loves to cook, and he was young. He was only maybe eight or. 10 and mm -hmm. I brought this apron out because I saved it yeah. and he's and he when he cooks he puts it on to this day so. that's what that's what I remember him in the butcher shop with. yeah yeah that. yeah is this, your, I did is this your pop too 
Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. So, so this is Army Army Times? Army Time. Yeah. 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 He was quite the dapper guy. Yeah. So where did, they, where did Mom and Dad meet? He, he, she lived with her, someone that raised her, one of her mm -hmm. aunts and her daughter in a house in Shrewsbury. And oh, my wow. dad had a really good friend. He was in the choir. They did that yearly one down at like um, College Church. Okay. And he loved being, he loved singing. Wow. My mother didn't think he had a voice, but he loved it anyhow. But he, I think I remember him singing at church once in a while. Oh, he did. Yes. At yeah. St. Peter's. You could, you could, you, you, hey, look at there's more than one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is neat. This is really neat. Is this somebody we know? That's my mom when she was in high in wow. high school graduation. We got stop signs. Yeah. And and what happened was they decided to there was such easy parking. That's one of the reasons everyone loved my yeah. You could just pull store. in. You just pulled in and pulled out, and there nothing was built across the street. It was still open fields i think yeah it was, uh, the, it was wood where the snooks is it was woods. it's yeah it was all woods yeah behind that was the dairy mm -hmm. woodland dairy did yeah you, did you guys have a deal with woodlawn dairy did they or, or cause since they were so oh, they were really close to my dad yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah and now were there ever cattle out there or that's just where they processed the milk oh that's what so it wasn't cattle was um a little bit north of that Okay. Yeah. So, so back where Worcester Woods is, or gravel yeah, road. It was gravel road back in there, and there was yeah. cattle. And we uh -huh. used to go sledding down Woodlawn yeah. Dairy Hill. Yeah. Yeah. So on Woodlawn, going south, there were lots of horses, and wow. that was fun. So and, this is probably the store in Kirkwood Road somewhere. Um. Road. Yes. Yes. I would say so. So that'd be a pretty big move, I think, from downtown Kirkwood to yeah. the, the area like Warson Woodish kind of area. I mean, it wasn't uh -huh. as developed as downtown. And yeah, he was. So it he had a great business, and we would take vacations every year, and he, we went to Colorado every year for three weeks. And wow. Yeah, he was able to get away. Okay. That would run it, so. There was a gentleman who did deliveries when, when I remember doing you guys doing deliveries, you had a little van, a little white Chevy van. Uh-huh. And there was a guy with a bow tie and mm -hmm. a crew cut. I want to say his name's Ed. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie? Okay. Mm -hmm. Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Who subsequently went to, after my dad's store closing, went to a couple of different places but he was he was winters. union so, so he could move and keep yeah work out his pension and stuff so he yeah he um worked for for um on the hill I'm trying to think mm. of the famous one on the hill oh okay oh Strom's no, no. Strom's that was our competitor yeah well I mean you're closed right <laughs> yeah. my uh we have a friend in the family that worked and retired from Strom's yeah over uh -huh. Webster or something. Yeah. So that was that was your big competition, Stroms. Now they put a big bed and door. Only right up there. because they had delivery. Ah, uh, okay. And we had delivery. Now you I guess you had a lot of older people that they that was their lifeline for. It wasn't yeah. as much older as convenience. They really people just you would think that people weren't that much into convenience, but it was great for them to be able to order what they wanted. And have it delivered, and they carry it in, and it was just yeah. really. Yeah, it was. But before it was, it was a good service. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there was a Bettendorf uh -huh. at the corner of, of Manchester, Manchester and Kirkwood. Limber, Limber, mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that the is that that'd be after you guys were already established out there? Uh, yeah. Um, and the but I I don't business? know oh. how much that really. It, it may have affected his business. Really, the right. big thing that affected his business was the when Kirkwood Road was was widened. Oh yeah, Manchester got got widened, and they put in curbs and they put in right blocks where you couldn't just turn anywhere. You had to go yeah. through stop stop. You had to go to the stoplight, 
and there were cur yeah, the yeah. curbs, and it and just you, wasn't convenient. You could only turn right coming no. out of the, yeah. Oh, it wasn't convenient at all. So my dad tried to um, stop it from happening because he really didn't understand why they were taking so much. Yeah, they took a lot I of right away. Yeah, yeah, a lot of right away. And so he thought just a light would be fine, you know? I understand that, but not taking using all the easement to yeah, they and taking it convenience. And that really was the beginning of the end for the mm -hmm. store. And I don't know how many years that lasted. I, I may yeah. come up with it. That that was I remember when that construction was going on. Then you, there was the mobile gas station. Oh on yeah. The other corner. Now you guys watch watch that be built. I guess when you were it was probably newer. the mobile. Yeah. Was that already there or was it? I was you know I, I just remember too. like being in high school and going down to um, the the golf course, the miniature. There golf. was a miniature golf course where the Hollywood go. golf. Holly, tell me about Hollywood Golf because oh, Greg that was talks. So about, fun. Was it miniature, miniature, miniature golf? Um, Larry would putt, know, putt? but it was putt putt maybe. Yeah. What else did they have besides that? Was oh, that they it? had lots of stuff, but Larry would. He went there all the time. I mean, it was a great place to meet uh -huh. girls. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And there was a little greenhouse back in there. There are greenhouses all over. I know now. So there was a little greenhouse with a little old lady in it, and she. She was mean to little kids. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then there was the Schmidt greenhouse. Yeah. And we were basically across the street from the Schmidt greenhouse. At, uh -huh. On Woodlawn. Right. And then there was the Hartmans. Uh-huh. Do you remember Marty? I met him. I, I talked. used to talk to him. Uh, he used to ride his bike all through here. Yeah. Marty Hartman. Yeah. Uh, I, when, did, when did he pass away? I, I, I think he's passed. Oh, yeah. I, it's yeah, been a long but time. It, he was old when I, I was think young. I talked to him at a neighborhood party within the last mm -hmm. ten years. So. Yeah, yeah, it's probably. Yeah, he would ride. A, he had a black and white Schwinn bike, big, mm -hmm. big basket. He was always toting stuff back and forth from here. Yeah, he had and we had yeah. so the big house next across from your your niece's house, yes. but one. Yeah, the big old house. The big old house. One that's sitting back was owned by the honors that had honor greenhouse oh really uh -huh. that's neat and that, that that's an old house grow, yeah they didn't grow mm -hmm. uh, plants yeah here. This they didn't yeah. yeah they didn't have and that. Th there was Inglehart's greenhouse yeah yeah uh, and there so. yeah they put three houses up on that one yeah and the, the only thing the 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 uh, schmidt greenhouse is still it's the super creek gardens now yeah you know it's funny it that i i go into that house and I knew Dan Schmidt, and we were at the school oh, together. Fun. And so I'm like in there buying something. I go, I used to run around. We used to have a trampoline back here. We, to, you know, and yeah. we did all that. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. great. But and there I, was greenhouse. Kirkwood area was a big greenhouse area. I, I hear stories back in the day, back in the 20s and even the teens. There would be people riding to, to St. Louis on the streetcar with greenhouse with flowers and all kinds of things that they were going to sell at the market. Oh, cool. And so it was more, yeah, because it went, actually, it didn't, it went right down here through into Glendale. Uh-huh. And down there where the Glendale Fire Department is. Uh-huh. That's where it went across there, and that's why those two or three stores are there. People oh. get off the streetcars, and they'd go shop. Oh, and that's what happened. And I that's didn't what, yeah. even realize that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now do you, do you remember, I guess, the golf course at all? Or that got, I think that got chopped up in the 40s. So I was I reading about it in this. Yeah, that book. The, the, this is uh, a good resource. The, mm -hmm. I use both the history of Kirkwood, mm -hmm. Missouri, 1851 to 1965. Mm -hmm. And then I also use St. Peter's. And this was their 125th year. Mm -hmm. um, so if I say uh, Monsignor Westoff, you, you know who I'm talking about. Which one? Westoff. Westoff, oh, Father yeah. Monsignor Westoff, yeah, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Here's the nuns you were probably talking about. Yeah, they, they look like... I don't know. I don't know any of them. So, no, maybe... What year was this thing published? In six... No, this was... It might say in the front page. Yeah, that. it should. I looked at it. 1957. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, it's possible. Yeah. So, there's a lot of good references in here, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And my... My grandfather and my father were very um, 
and and Uncle Franny were very generous to the the church to the church. Well, that's good. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. And I read back where my grandfather actually, when they were building the library, and they didn't have enough money coming through in grants, and they were just they were close, but they weren't there. That a group of families and my grandfather was one that gave money to that. So that's, that's cool. cool. Oh, that's yeah. Fun. So, so have you spent your whole adult life in Kirkwood? I know you grew most up. of it. Wow. I went down to St. Lucie, and then I um, decided. My father had said, "If you just stay in town for two years for college, then I'll send you anywhere you want for the other two years." Okay. So I came home and said, um, "I want to stay down at St. Louis U." It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted you to get a little bit more exposure in life, I guess. Yeah, and go to anyhow. Yeah. So I did. And and what and what kind of work did you end up doing? You you screwed. I was in that. retail, of course. Oh, but I okay. had a psychology oh, wow. psychology and marketing degree. Interesting. Which, yeah. So I really didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want my father to pay for more hours for tuition for mm -hmm. for me to have a, a certificate for teaching. So just sitting out. In the hallway in the dorm one night and I said I don't know what I'm gonna do I need to get a job with marketing and psychology and this one girl I knew but wasn't a real close friend she said why don't you become a buyer I go what's that she goes you know just get into retail and just buy so I did that it was really it's in your blood your dad was doing yeah that. okay yeah yeah and, and what company did you work for? I first worked for Sticks, Baron Fuller. Oh, okay. And then I went to um, Famous Bar oh, in the okay. late 70s. It was probably about the time my dad's store right, closed. Was, and, um, I remember the sign was for sale. Did someone buy? I'm, I'm sure they did, but I... Yeah, I remember they had to move it because it was right in front, and then they had to slide it down towards the Pontiac. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, so with um, Famous Bar, I I became a buyer of shoes. So I was in Europe five times a year, oh, two wow. weeks at a time. That was a bummer, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, it was really tough <laughs> <in> life. Yeah. <laughs> so I've had a nice life. So I, I don't know where all this will go, but if I have questions, can I give you a call? Sure. All right. This has been a lot of fun. And I'm, it's amazing that when you said they were above the produce, I'm like, no, I don't even remember. Yeah. You'd buy a bottle of soda and there'd be some right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> Watching to see if you put your bottle back? We would have to walk the store with the bottle. That was the problem. We couldn't leave the store. Yeah. We, did, we were, didn't have two didn't have two cents. And man, if we found bottles, we'd bring bottles up there. We oh, have, sure. Oh, man, you oh, find five did. bottles, that's a pop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that great. Was, oh, yeah. Those are, that's, that was yeah. a lot of fun. And uh, Yeah. I appreciate you, you uh, giving me your time today. Oh, my gosh. I loved it. And let's see if I... I asked you about Marty Hardman. Memories. Um, what did you like most about Kirkwood growing up? Um, it was just so, it's just such a warm and friendly community. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I loved it. Yeah. You used to ride bikes and I used, where we are mm -hmm. currently, Dixon and Essex, we would ride just oh, as yeah. you did. Oh yeah, that, w this was it, this all was of so our, fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what is the, the the biggest changes, or what do you miss? If there's something in, about Kirkwood area, yeah, and, and that I miss. Yeah, what do you miss? Is there something you miss? Or I don't know. I just all, made it's the changing people, so much. It changes all. The you know time. what? I we were the young ones on the block when we moved in. Oh, okay. And so, so we've had to say goodbye to yeah. several uh, people, and so I really miss them. And. But Kirkwood, I just don't think it's changed. No, that it's, much. it's 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 a, it's pretty unique. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really unique. And uh, I used to volunteer for the when they had tree keepers. I was a tree keeper. Um, I volunteered down at the botanical garden. I'm really into mm -hmm. gardening. What do you remember about St. Agnes? The, the what about St. Agnes? Yeah, you the remember, little what ladies you, what, yeah. used to come over to oh, the yeah? store. Oh, the nuns and. No, not the nuns. The the people that lived there could the actually come. Old folks. Yeah, they were old folks, and they could come across the street, and it was safe. And mm -hmm. the, 
the nuns would let them do whatever. And okay, this, they'd buy things and take back. There were a couple of them that always called me Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. They thought I looked oh exactly like her. The men or the ladies? <laughs> was well, it was so always funny. ladies. Was it mainly la ladies in there? It place? was all ladies. Okay, okay. I don't remember. I think they was re they were retired uh, nuns. You think? Originally, that I was. I don't know that. Yeah, I, I think it changed because it. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I know they would take us from St. Peter's over. They would sing and Christmas stuff, and I'm like, so if I'm 10 years old and it's 1960 or 1970, and they're 100 years old, they're like born in the middle of the 1800s, you know? Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh. Yeah. Yeah. That was so. Uh, Back in the day. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I, this sure. has been a lot of a lot of fun, and you and thank your dad for his service. Is he buried at JB? Where is no, he buried? he's buried um, at Calvary. No, 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 no. He he um, donated his by his body to science. Oh, okay. Because of what happened to his kidney, he just wanted to make sure it didn't happen to somebody else. That's that's actually pretty noble. Mm -hmm. Your dad was a great guy. Yeah. Where did your dad go? Did he ever go to England or anything during the war? Yeah, he went to England and France. Okay, that's sort of my grandpa. And my oh, grandpa was a cook. Yeah. Do you have any of your dad's military papers? And when I say that is his discharge paperwork or anything, because your dad, my grandpa, might have worked. <laughs> in the same, That'd be great. We, you know, it's funny. I was in the Air Force for 33 years, and... If you want to tick people off, you call it the work in it. You call it a chow hall. Uh huh. Hey, if you want to be honoring to them, you call it a dining facility. And, and then they call it the defect. Uh huh. But, but yeah, I would be interested because I know what bomb group my grandpa was in, and he was in England, and then and then he moved him over to France as the war moved, and huh. and he was he was a cook. Yeah, now, I'll call it cook. But but they did all kinds of things. Yeah, I think when my mom divided up pictures that she sent most of them to my brother. So it's probably going to be me when I'm in California and I can... Well, but that, I do find have, that out. I do find have out some paperwork because downstairs. Because I have my grandfather's discharge paperwork and stuff, and it tells places they were in, what kind of a bomb grouper, or what they were doing, they uh -huh. were supporting infantry or their, yeah. their forces or whatever. That's pretty interesting. Cause yeah. My grandfather and his brother's his, his his father committed suicide, and, and in Nebraska they put him in an orphanage, and they wow. got separated, and they never saw each other again until my grandfather went to uh, his place in England when he was checking in during World War One, and they're going, hmm, hey, that's an unusual name, Youngstrom. Do you have a do you have a brother or anybody named Mark Youngstrom? He goes, yeah, but I don't know, never seen him, and you know, since I was a kid, they wow. met up over there, and then the family. Reconnected. Oh, how cool! Yes, it's so it's like you just never know with these with you know, things like that how you're gonna. Yeah. And that's one of the things I looked for on your name was to see if my mom and dad were on your. Yeah. I don't remember ever doing credit. I think that was too rich for my folks, but. I don't know. Wow. That's my. That was my high. That was my. Uh, in sixth grade at Tillman, that was my gym teacher. Oh, cool. Yeah. The yeah. Rauscher family, the Rauscher Chevrolet people. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is me. Yeah. The St. Genevieve people. Rectory. Yeah. The St. Peter's Rectory. So they were the like, St. Genevieve and St. Peter's and Mm-hmm. El Gonfa, yeah. This is just all. So how far would you guys deliver? I mean, what was the if you had people that were your customers back when you were on Kirkwood Road, did you have some? My dad, when we went to visitation, my dad would always bring the nuns food. Oh, okay. Something to, yeah. Holidays, whatever. Oh, yeah. And that, mm -hmm. that was down on Cabinet in the city. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was a good 40-minute ride each way. And my dad would um, bring them turkeys and whatever. And so I don't know that anybody else. I mean, there's Straubs, so they had a, uh -huh. they covered all that kind of market. Yeah, I mean, there would just become the point where people are like, that's just too far. Yeah. 
That is really neat. I, I you know what? I, when I did my my, you were when you were thirteen, you were working at your dad's store. I was cutting grass, so I I had a lawnmower and push it all over Kirkwood. Uh -huh. I mean, and uh, and that's that's neat because I was like, so, and so one, what, one what, of the what year would that have been? That would have been in the very early seventies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we were uh, by the time I was in high school, you guys were pretty much closed up. Yeah. So we've been in this house, Larry and I, since nineteen eighty six, but. Um, I lived in the city for a little while after college mm -hmm. and I really didn't know what was going on with my dad's store at the time that it wasn't, it needed to be sold so that he, he was just. So how did that work out? So he's, he, he's leasing the building. So the building goes back to his, uh, I guess, first specs. Yeah. But he sells off well his sell inventory. Yeah. It sells his inventory. Well, I customer. came up with a plan. Let's start at a low discount. And so, so just put up 10% and see what happens. A lot of people came in, then we dropped it to 15, then we dropped it to 20. When you but say, we wait, did wait, that wait. after a period of time. I don't know, I was head marketing, so he was- So what were you, what were you mean say you dropped it to, it was somebody buying- The discount. To buy the whole store? No, just oh, to customers. Buy. Oh, so increased yes, business. So that we retain some profit off of it. And the other thing we did was we, um, my father had just lost money. He just kept paying union people to work and, mm -hmm. and they had rules and he had to give them right. so many hours, even for part-time. It was, so he just, you know, it was time to sell. So we were trying to come up with a plan to, um, make sure that we got enough money out of the equipment and this girl that I hired at Six Baron Fuller, I was like the first department manager in a, um, it was at, at the budget store at Six Baron Fuller mm -hmm. Crestwood. Mm -hmm. And my aunt worked there. She did? Yeah. She worked in the cosmetics, I think. Okay. Yeah. Probably knew her. Elnora Bedford. Elnora Bedford. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. My mom's sister. Anyway. So I hired this girl that was a big girl and strong. And I was like, and I hit it off with her. And I, I hired everybody that worked there. But she and I became, she's still alive and we're best friends. Um, she's in Colorado now. But at, at the time she was married and her brother-in-law worked for Kroger's. And so he had all kinds of contacts. And we were able to get such top dollars on all the... Um, equipment that we had. Oh, so you sold unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so they, because Kroger's it was full of yeah. equipment, and my father had bought all that over the years. So that means equipment like butcher equipment and different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was probably I think it might have been 1977 or 78 that it closed. All right. So I'm just want to clarify. You guys moved out to the Woodlawn, Manchester about when? 1950s, say? 56. 50. So 58. And that was from the Kirkwood event. Because I remember you had a banner or something up like over the produce that said, Yes, ma'am, 65 years in Kirkwood. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he changed that all the time. He changed the number. Like, <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else to, to read. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Now, have you been in the building? Uh, I think there's lawyers. No. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I just... That's not... I don't know. It's not the same. No. Yeah. And I don't really need another... I've got plenty of attorneys. And... Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I haven't got and, any tickets, so... Gravel in the basement. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, I would. took a bunch of pictures of some pictures. Good. And I'll, I'll see what I can do. And... and and who knows? Yeah. But I definitely appreciate this is this is kind of priceless right here. Yeah. Yeah. Now I you know. see when you're in the military and you kind of push it down a little bit, Helen. Well, That's like swagger you, right there. Yeah, I forgot to give you the you said picture you're on right? Kirkwood Road. Oh, okay. Um. Hmm. Oh, here's the picture of the what was on the side of the um, 
delivery truck. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh, this is one of your brothers sent you that? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he so. took a picture for me. Hey. And then there's um, the more current one. I mean, the, this was a, this came across oh, on wow. Facebook. Okay. And it was, does anybody remember Harris Supermarket? And, of course, I put yes, I think so. <laughs> I but think so. A lot of people commented on it. It was great. Yeah, it was that's a long the, time ago. there you go. Well, thank you so much, Nancy.